what is the POD's understanding of the global government agenda or new world order? The desire to rule the world is an extremely ancient urge among a very small percentage of the human species. Sargon of Akkad, Alexander the Macedonian, Julius Caesar of Rome, Genghis Khan of the Mongol steppes, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, and German Fuhrer Adolf Hitler are some of the examples most commonly given, but they are hardly alone among a list of all the conquerors who sought to expand their own property's borders. So, for those with eyes to see, the trend toward a single worldwide empire has been obvious for literally thousands of years. The revelation of St. John of Patmos, 13 verses 16 through 18, describes a global dictatorship predicted to occur during the end times leading up to Judgment Day by saying, quote, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. End quote. This verse may have inspired the later rituals of the York Rite Freemasonry, or the verse itself may have been inspired by the ancient Solomonic labor union practices emulated in the later Masonic rituals. Either way, in the ritual of the Mark Master Mason, the first degree of the York Rite, following the initial three of the Blue Lodge, the candidate is shown the potential punishment for someone who did not present their proper Mason's Mark in exchange for their daily wages. In this context, the Mason's Mark is further associated with the lost word of Freemasonry, supposedly tantamount to the lost name of the monotheist religion's god. Espousing works such as Thomas More's, for such as Thomas More's 1516 Utopia and Sir Francis Bacon's 1626 New Atlantis, most of the founders of the United States Federal Government of America were Freemasons, and they constructed Washington, D.C. as a geometrically mirrored model of the heavens. When papal infallibility was declared by Pope Pius IX in the 1870 document ratified by the First Vatican Council, called Pastor Eternus, it was merely an admission of what had always been doctrine inside the Roman Catholic Church throughout the entirety of the Crusades, the Inquisition, and the Conquistador eras. The Pope is above the law to such an extent that if a Pope declares a thing so, it simply is. For example, the papal bull issued by Pope Clement XII in 1738, entitled In Eminenti, which declared joining or belonging to, quote, certain societies, companies, assemblies, meetings, congregations, or convecticles called in the popular tongue Liberi Miratori, or Franks Maisons, end quote, an excommunication worthy offense for Catholics, with that bull serving as an interdiction, making it anathema to provide communion to any Freemason. Some may argue this papal bull was issued to stave off the then rising infiltration of Masonic lodges by staunch Illuminati sectarians on one hand, and by reckless Hellfire Club libertines on the other. However, as the bull itself states of all secret society members in general, quote, 
If they were not doing evil, they would not have so great a hatred of the light. End quote. Much of 20th century geopolitical history has been forwarded by Bolshevik ideolo ideologies infiltrating Freemasonry and being conflated with the Hebrew blood libel myth by old world anti-Semitism. Once Freemasonry had become a truly global network, it became a de facto secular New World Order in direct or indirect competition with the elder empire of Catholicism for rule over the unified planet Earth. So, from the conservative Catholic point of view, Freemasonry historically harbors radicalized liberalism, while from a Masonic point of view, Catholicism has become, or always was, a spiritual dictatorship under the autocratic rule of the Vatican papacy. Neither is ideal. <laughs>